Hi everyone. So thank you. This is this is a, a joint press conference uh, for our forthcoming games against both Wrexham uh, and Real Madrid. Uh, please raise your hands uh, if you have a question uh, and wait to be invited. We're joined online by some reporters from Houston who, who can't be here, focused on the Real Madrid game towards the end of the press conference. Um, we'll invite questions online. So, let's get started. Simon Stone? Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simon. Um, <laughs> could you tell us, first of all, how... Um, it's not too bad and today he was um, running again not evolving in the group but we hope he can join tomorrow in the training um, I know we asked you about Avram Glazer on um, Friday but he was obviously at the game on on Saturday have you spoken to him what, what kind of conversations have you had with him uh, afterwards I didn't speak anymore with him after the game um, Eric, could I just ask that these tours obviously it's a lot of games and a lot of travelling how do you find that preparation do you, is, is, it, is it too much would it be easier just to stay in Manchester because we know Man United's global brand so you have to travel around but how do you find it do you uh, it's about finding a good balance uh, and football is one, two, three and so football is uh, making the shadow is um, is ahead of everything else, uh, but also uh, you have to know what you say. We are a global brand, and we have to sell the club. Uh, we want also um, be uh, come towards our fans, and our fans are all over the world. So we want to show our, ourselves there, and I think also for ourselves is a fantastic uh, uh, experience. And you are two weeks on the way and I think it's a big advantage uh, that you are two weeks with your with your team uh, the players uh, to build a, uh, yeah, uh, really the team spirit uh, also with the staff the cooperation uh, uh, in between the staff towards the players so uh, it's a great opportunity to, to strengthen that and that's what we're working on so I think it's really useful So you find that being a way together rather than being at home when people would be in there. Well, no, better, uh, better, better or worse. I think there are more more ways to roam. Eh? But uh, I think this is a good one. Simon. Eric, um, <coughs> just wondering what kind of side you're going to be putting out tomorrow, what kind of players we'll, we'll see. And also, have you watched the Wrexham documentary? I didn't watch the uh, Wrexham documentary. Eh? Uh, uh, but... Um, uh, I know them. Uh, we played them last year. I know uh, they they got promoted. I have, of course, I've seen uh, the uh, the actuality and uh, the the way they play in this moment. I know the players, and we will we will face them. We have brought uh, the under 21s in, but we will strengthen the under 21s with some players uh, who are in the tour with the first squad. And, and you, you were asked about an attacker the other day. There's been a lot of talk since then. I just wonder if you've made any progress and getting that striker that you need over the line. Oh, no, we make progress, yeah. Uh, but if we, if you know how it works, uh, when we have him, we will tell you directly. Andy. Jaden Sancho, uh, he's been playing as a false nine. Is that something you're looking at maybe in the future? And how do you think he's been performing pre-season? Oh, he's, he's doing well, uh, also in that role. I think Jaden is the... Um, is the best in positions in, in central positions where he can get to have involvement or also when he played in wide areas but uh, you know when you're playing with me in wide areas uh, in the right uh, setting you also have the freedom uh, in the right setting uh, so get me right uh, to, to be inside um, in 10 positions, in central positions, but also when you are in Swiss positions, you have to uh, to make runs behind, uh, because that's very important, our way of play, that we have many players who run behind. Uh, one over there. Uh, when it comes to traveling, you play here in San Diego and then you have to travel to Houston on Wednesday against Real Madrid. Is that going to be tough? And also to follow up, Andre Onanas, great signing for Manchester United. Are you excited to work with him again? 
<clears throat> yeah, it's tough, but it's also the Premier League. You have to travel. Um, we call it Champions League. You have to travel. So also that is what we have to get used to. Um, so yeah, um, we do that. It's no problem, and uh, we uh, program that really well. So the preparation is top, and then the players are fit to play the game. And yeah, with Andre, of course, <laughs> I'm happy he's here, and so we integrated that really well in the team. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, he's he's there, and yeah, we're everyone is really happy in the club. Let's go. Hi Eric, it's two bit less for me. Can I just get confirmation on where we stand with Anthony Alanga and Dean Henderson, please? No, that it, plays in our squad. And again, when we have news, we will tell you. Uh, I don't know if you see, um, PSG have been offered 300 million euros for Kylian Mbappe, which, they want to, which they're going to accept. Um, there's talk that if he rejects that, that PSG would be open to a loan offer. Would that be someone you'd consider, or is that completely out of the question? And, and also your view on the, such such a huge fee. <laughs> No, we never speak about players who are under contract in other clubs. Uh, Samuel. Uh, Eric, you said you didn't speak anymore to Avram. Did, would you like to speak to him anymore? And have you spoken to Joel Glazer at all recently? No. And would you like, would you like to? Oh, when I want to, I, I can reach them. It's, it's if you can just speak to them instantly? Yeah. And just on the strike situation, are you confident of having a new attacker or striker in for the first game of the season against Wolves? The only thing what I can say is um, we do everything what's in our power to get that done. And, yeah, and it's up to me, yeah, as soon as possible. Uh, how, how, how earlier, the better, because we have to integrate them in the team, in the way of play. So. Uh, uh, yeah, in an ideal situation, he was already here, uh, but you, you're not always getting ideal situations as manager, and that is uh, then you have to deal with the situation. Uh, Dave, um, hi, Eric. Uh, just follow up on that question. Um, Marcus Rashford scored 30 goals last season, a huge leap from the previous season. How confident are you that he can reproduce those figures next season and, and be up to 25 plus 30 goals that season again? Well, when his when his attitude is right, then he, he will do that. It's not easy, huh? and the team has to play well to uh, to put him in the right position. And uh, when the team is playing well, um, so when our uh, we'll say when we keep the rules and principles in our way of play, and Rashford's uh, attitude is right, and he puts himself in the right position, he will finish. Uh, because uh, he has such great abilities um, when he's in the box uh, he's, he's yeah, clinical and he, uh, he's ruthless and he goggles and does uh, with right with left with his head and do you, do you need more goals from other players because you're the lowest <coughs> scorers in the league in the top six last season with 58 goals do you need more goals from Rashford to be the best player in the league relying on Marcus for example uh, as well yeah, yeah. but um, so we're underperforming there and we are aware of it and so yeah uh, others also has to contribute in that area uh, but therefore also we'll uh, be looking for scoring abilities and i think with mason mount already and uh, we have a player extra who is capable of not only score goals but also to create and to put place as resford in the position so he can score more goals but there's a whole team yeah where we, we have to score more how do you like San Diego so far since you just you guys getting acclimated to being here and how excited are you to play at Snapdragon Stadium? Uh, I'm really excited but unfortunately I didn't uh, see anything still so far as, uh, uh, except from, from the air and uh, from the play uh, <laughs> San Diego so I'm looking forward to uh, I hope there's some time to see something Adam. Eric Anthony <laughs> Uh, really hopeful and yeah um, 
you, of course when you have a player in squad you accept of you um, expect that he's available and then the players have to take the responsibility to be available but when he's not I have to deal with the situation and we show that we also then uh, can be successful uh, without uh, that striker but yeah of course it's more easy when you have to strike in your team uh, because I think uh, uh, every club who wins big trophies um, has scoring abilities in that team there's been no approaches for Marshall at all from any other clubs uh, is he set as part of your plan for this season? Uh, we need a good squad and uh, Anthony Martial is, is a brilliant football player and so he will help us. Uh, he scores goals um, and also in, in other areas of football like pressing, um, in possession uh, combinations, uh, he's a great player and uh, yeah, let's hope uh, he will be fit and he stays fit. Uh, Rob. Okay, sorry. Um, you just mentioned the, the squad there. Um, you're going to have four competitions to play again next season. Um, is it a case that if you get one more player, you'll be happy with the size of your squad? Or would you like to see more change between now and the, the deadline? Let's first, um, one by one. Uh, we um, we strengthen the midfield department. We have the keeper situation. Uh, we, we sort that out now. Uh, we want the front player in. And then we will see what happens. Do you feel like you've got enough players to, to cover? Because you, you played an awful lot of games. Oh, spells where you, you oh, didn't have the Yeah, from quantity, I'm sure. Then we have enough players to to cover it. And so I'm also happy with the development of of some academy players. Uh, and also we need uh, positions free uh, that they have, have have the opportunity to deserve their position. Uh, one at the back. With all respect to Wrexham, what can you realistically hope to gain by playing a team of their caliber? Uh, it's um, it, for us is um, a very good game because as I just mentioned the academy players, so it's a great experience for them and it will help them and it will support them to to flow um, into the first team and. Um, so in that respect, uh, it's a huge game. Um, so really good opposition. Uh, it's uh, in the USA, so they have to travel it. Uh, it's very good for their uh, yeah, for uh, for their education. Um, so they have to deal with uh, uh, with the pressure. Uh, the, the, the stadium is sold out, uh, with a fantastic ambience. The, the players were really, really looking forward to it. Uh, the, the game is broadcasted, so yeah, it's fantastic experience for the young players, and yeah, that we can present this to our young players. So I'm really happy that that um, yeah, that we can do that, and uh, so great opportunity. Uh, playing in San Diego tomorrow and Houston on Wednesday, do you enjoy the travel and getting global exposure to your sport, or is it more of a pain in the neck? In <laughs> 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 neck, yeah. No, I, I tried to express um, the first question. I was at the second there. Uh, uh, um, I think it's very helpful uh, uh, when you travel together for two weeks. Um, yeah, deal with with yeah with the juniors. Uh, yeah, you get fatigue from it. But uh, uh, but in the Premier League and in the Champions League, you have the same. Uh, and what we have to do is uh, the, uh, the fans expect performance, and so we are, have to deliver. So we have to be f uh, fit for that. So the players have to to live along the right rules to get it in. So after the right lifestyle, it's about food, about sleep. Um, uh, yeah, do the right things in training, make sure you do the right things in recovery and uh, make sure you have the right team spirit and then it's a very good experience and it can is really uh, helpful to get the, the right spirit, spirit in a team. Uh, so I think uh, very good for going into the season um, to work on this team building process. Paul. Eric, Johnny Evans has been around the squad for a short time now. What impression has he made on particularly on the younger players and what are the chances of him getting a, a longer term deal? Like you know, I think um, he, he helped us, uh, um, as you said, younger players, but also uh, from numbers here. 
uh, uh, all, not all the internationals were in and then we have to manage the, the, the load from the players so that was really useful and uh, yeah, Johnny wants to stay fit he wants to still he has a career um, uh, yeah, last week <laughs> uh, I think um, uh, he played a very good game against Lyon and you could see how he was mentoring the younger players and uh, I think he was pushing the younger players to a higher level and that can be really helpful so yeah I'm happy uh, we bring him now in uh, he will be tomorrow in that game so I'm happy he wants to do that and yeah I think we help him as well mm -hmm. Over there uh, Obviously with Bruno Fernandes now coming back as like, with the captaincy what are the added expectations of such a top player knowing his qualities? And what are the expectations for that midfield overall? Obviously adding uh, Mason Mount as well. Yeah, a captain is not only wearing the, uh, the band, but also uh, make sure uh, that a uh, team kept, keep connected. Um, uh, uh, that we have the right spirit, that we have the right winning attitude. Um, uh, so you need to be um, uh, inspirational skills. Um, you need to have the authority. Also, you need game understanding uh, to transfer the rules and the principles from the manager into the team. Um, so also your, so your communication. So uh, you need a lot of skills, but also a captain can't do it on his own. And uh, last week, I explained how I see a team and yeah, you need more leaders and yeah, uh, luckily um, in this squad we have more leaders uh, who not only uh, they will support but they will also play their role and to send the team in the right direction. Uh, last one in the room here. Yeah. Uh, you talked about the, the travel. Can you explain a little bit more about the logistics of how you will move different teams? What will your first unit go to? Houston tomorrow, when will you go? Will this, will this team that plays against Wrexham stay here? How, how does that all work when you have two games in 24 hours? Yeah, so we, we're planning this over, over months and so we, we, we know already for a long, long time how it has to look like. So yeah, we, we're planning this. Um, so we bring in the under 21s in, so one team will stay here behind. Um, I will stay there as well, but also we bring uh, coach and the technical director, Darren Fletcher in. Uh, we, we bring some more in, also an analyst. Uh, we bring in uh, some kitmen stay behind um, uh, to, to help the team uh, from under 21s. And, but of course, it's um, uh, Travis. Uh, he's the one um, who is in charge in the team, and I will help him and support him. And of course, uh, under 21s is also a part of the first squad. Hey, that's always under my uh, uh, supervision. So in uh, that matter, hey, we want to have a red line in our club. And th that means we want to have uh, the principles, the rules uh, from the first team has to go down, uh, down to the bottom, um, how we want to play, because we want to, um, uh, to, to educate, to teach players uh, in the way of a united way. And so it's easier to, to flew to flow into the first team in the first squad and uh, that is um, why this trip is very useful for us so and there will be also a team who will f fly out tomorrow afternoon already to Houston and prepare that game against Real Madrid so you will not go to Houston uh, of course I go hey, but I go after this game is finished I fly over as well okay, okay we'll now turn to online questions from reporters in Recording Houston in progress Okay, we'll go first question for Eric Estrategas. Uh, yeah, Eric Sirel from Estrategas, okay. Mexico. Uh, what, is this, what is behind the decision that you made to make a uh, change of captain and why is it not I just, I just explained, but uh, I will repeat it, um, that why Bruno, that he's an inspirational leader, a lot of game understanding, uh, high standing in the team, uh, he's a social connector, so that's why. You guys, Ben Sosenko next. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, tell, tell me your impressions of Houston. Have you ever been? Uh, what are you expecting? Um, and what does it mean for a city to be to have two clubs uh, like Manchester United and Real Madrid uh, playing? Uh, playing there uh, against each other. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I've, ne I've never been there in Houston. I, I know only Houston from Westerns. Westerns. 
<laughs> but um, I think a lot of change there. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm uh, really curious to find out. And uh, we're coming there to play a game. I think it's um, yeah, a game between um, yeah, two, probably the biggest clubs in Europe. I think uh, they have the biggest fan bases uh, across the world. So yeah, it's an amazing game uh, to have, uh, that Houston has our two clubs in an event. And uh, I think it will be yeah, amazing, amazing experience. I think for all the fans there in Houston, and yeah, we want to give ourselves our, our best. And I'm sure Real Madrid will do the same. So it's going to be a great game, and we are looking forward. And for us, it's a very good test. Thank you, coach. You're welcome. One final one from Jason Bristol. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you very much indeed.